Well, I mean, I think the first process is the, the risk coming into the market. Now, yeah. now, it's actually talking to the client, understanding their needs, getting it into a format, getting the right level of information to be able to bring it into the market. If you're looking at one of the major airlines, you need to know the, inf you know, the information of the age of the aircraft, the individual aircraft, you know, so, so the actual stuff they'd need to know, who they've been assured with before, what, what sort of coverage are they looking for. And this is primarily a client broker conversation yes. at, uh, at this stage? Is the brokers generally know enough to have facilitate oh, all of those conversations? No, they, they are as knowledgeable about race right and the risk, if not more so in certain areas than the London underwriters, because okay. you know they are specialists in their own right in, the, yeah. in, this, in this space. And you said uh, there's obviously 200 or so uh, brokers. So will some of those be, you know, we, we just, we just, we're looking for this sort of risk and we're quite narrow, or will they be quite broad? Or? Um, the larger global brokers are generally broad with specialist teams. Yeah. So, so you won't have someone who's Un, you won't have a broker that's um, preparing information on marine one day and then the next day doing financial process. So there may be some like that, but you know, when when they're, they're larger brokers, they tend to specialise or have by, specialised by team. teams. Yeah. Yeah. So so you'll have a marine team, you'll have an energy team, you'll have a P and C property and casualty team. You might have a fit financial. Uh, financial risk sort of team within that. It's not just about the size of the premium because you can have a, a large premium that's fairly simple to calculate but right. it's more about the complexity of the risk and, and the, the factors that you need to consider where, you're right, where the R comes into the science. So I'm a client, I have a complex risk, let's say it's an oil tanker, I probably know you anyway because we're in the same business, I approach you know, a broker and you obtain from me the information you need what, what happens next? But if we assume it's going to rebroke, then they're trying to work out well, which market does it need to go to. Um, and that may be locally. So they might say, well, actually, we, we, we know some capacity locally that's got the expertise to be able to write this. Or more commonly uh, in the London market, they'll say, well, actually, I'm going to take this into the London market. They'd also be thinking about, well, what, what, what do I need to do from a reinsurance position? You know, uh, uh, let's, let's say, for instance, that they decide that this one's going to place wholly in the London market because it's probably easier for this example to go through. So they, they've looked at all the attributes, they've determined that they are going to rebroke it, and they've determined that the, the best place to look for that insurance is within the London market. So. Okay. You mentioned reinsurance. Yeah. Could you just explain the difference between reinsurance and insurance? Yes. So if you've got an insurance risk, that is the, the client's risk being insured. Yeah. Um, but what it might be is, is an insurer can end up with a, a even not, if you get a lot of 25s and they're big numbers, you end up with a big with, piece of with insurance. an enormous liability. Yeah. yeah. So what they will do is they will consider, well, I, I'm not comfortable having that level of exposure you know, on my balance sheet. If that goes wrong, then uh, while I'll make a, a, an excessive return, uh, if it goes well, yeah. the, the, the downside is, is excessive for me. So what they'll, they'll look at is they'll look at maybe reinsurance. So we've got to the stage of the flow. The, uh, the client's found a broker. The broker, let's say they've decided they're going to, to rebroke this deal. And then let's say for, for, for the purposes of this flow, they, they decided well, we're going we're gonna to take it all in the London. We're going to look to place that all in the London market. What, what happens next? These brokers are very experienced in the market they're, they're operating in. So they'll know who are the, the people that they well, the underwriters that have the expertise in that area. So the first thing is they're not going in blind. They're not just wandering around the market with, I have this risk to do. That's, they know what the underwriters' appetites are and they know what their expertise is. So they might have a risk that's, you know, maybe a line of 100 million. They know that that underwriter has got an appetite for 100 million. They know that it fits within the risk appetite. It might be a one conversation saying, do you want to write this? Yep. A risk coming into the market on average will have four participants on it, no, four, four four syndicates or or four company uh, insurers. So, so the first thing the broker wants to do is, is say, well, I'm going to get someone who's going to be the leader on this piece of work, and that that it doesn't mean they're going to take it all, but they're the acknowledged lead or one of the acknowledged leads in that. So sort they're of doing insurance. most of the kind of administrative legwork associated with this. Not necessarily, but I'll come on to okay. that. But, but what they are certainly doing is they're they're setting you know, what rate they feel is operate. And, and you have a lot of follow market who know enough about that lead to say, I'm, you know, I trust them, I know how they operate and I'm happy to follow them because a lead okay. implies the following. But we're looking at about um, somewhere between 150 and 200,000 risks coming into the market. So every, every year. Yeah, so if you think the market's 40, 60 billion, it tells you what your average size risk is. So we've got uh, essentially a, a, a group of underwriters. They, their 
thinking about what as they're approached by the brick? While they're not walking around every underwriting, you know, sort of, or, of piece, they are looking at, well, who's the specialist in this area? Who do a lot, a lot of work with? Who's got the expertise? And narrow it down to a number of people that can have the initial conversation with. Yep. And what they're doing with that person, might believe, they're, they're going in and they're introducing the risk. Um, they're giving the history of the risk. They're giving the all the information that the underwriter will need to be able to assess whether they want to underwrite that risk. And if so, uh, at what sort of rate and premium do they want to do that? And in terms of the kind of documentation that goes along with each of these stages, you say that the first, first piece of documentation is an MRC? During submission, it could just be a submission pack. And what the carrier is doing at that point is then saying, starting to formulate what the terms and conditions should be for that risk. And once they're agreeing that, what the broker is recording those terms and conditions is on a, on a market reform contract. An, an MRC, yeah? An MRC or SLIP, uh, yeah. they're sometimes called. And they're common formats. It's supposed to be a single format, but things evolve. Yep. You know, so so you, they're slightly varied. So these are essentially a draft set of insurance terms? Yes, yep. so, so it has specific sections, so it'll have sections regarding regulatory information, payment information, risk information, all sorts of different sections, and then the information is gradually populated as you're going through that quote mechanism. Yep. Um, and then when you got to the point where both the broker and the carrier are happy with the terms and conditions on the MRC, they will, they will stamp that they're, they're happy to take, they are bound to that risk by their proportion. Yep. So they, and they actually, in a lot of cases, actually use a stamp. So they will stamp yep. it and they will sign it. Also it's called a scratch. So the signature is a, so they'll say, I'm putting my stamp down. You'll hear them say that a lot. I'm putting my stamp down. 25% of that premium and here's my, you know, here's my scratch. And is that still done on the MRC itself? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and then you'd get the rest of the follow market putting their stamps down, and then the risk is bound. I would say that's the the first key process, which is placement. Yeah. So that's the end of the placement process. Yeah. So you've gone all the way from the client to the risk being placed. 